Hello and welcome to this ZenWorks Service Desk video on what's new in ZSD version 23.4. I'm Paul Pedron, a product manager for the ZenWorks portfolio, specifically ZenWorks Service Desk. We have a saying that productivity is in the details. So I'd like to focus on the details added to ZenWorks Service Desk to help you improve your customer IT service management processes for customer self-help and faster call resolution. We will be covering these three topics in today's video. Evolve IT with Unified Endpoint Management, the ZenWorks Service Desk version 23.4 release themes, and enhancements and feature details and demonstration. The UEMP portfolio focuses on evolving its IT ability to manage, secure, and protect, as well as provision devices and users, in an identity-centric manner to improve the security of your ever-expanding workspace. ZenWorks Service Desk assists in the UEM framework for managing the endpoints and users by providing some dashboarding and reporting, along with the user self-help and request ticketing. The UAM framework has all these components to best analyze, manage, secure, and protect your endpoints and your users. We'll be focusing on ZenWorks Service Desk component, which has integrations to ZenWorks Configuration Management, ZenWorks Asset Management, and ZenWorks Reporting. Let's cover some of the release themes. First off, we have a quote, you may delay, but time will not by Benjamin Franklin. This is so important in service management, call resolution, and keeping your users productive. Productivity, again, is in the details. And we're focused on the details of this product to make your organization more efficient with minimal time loss. Some of the directional themes are leveraging your ATOL processes, accelerate communications in regards to service management through workflows, automation, and request routing to achieve a high rate of call resolution and productivity uptime for users and systems. Another one is support invested services. Architect ZenWorks Service Desk system capabilities to support customer investments through integrations with cloud, authentication, asset inventory, and other environments. Enhance essential systems components to increase out-of-box security while supporting advanced security configuration. Ease of installation and configuration, simplify upgrades, and the flexibility to evolve the system uniquely to the required environment. And simplify the user experience. Improve the look, feel, and usability of the product UI to increase user productivity and improve customer experience through self-help and other means that are built into ZenWorks Service Desk. Let's cover some of the features. First, we'll cover the online update feature which you can see we're currently at 23.4 in this particular release. How we got there was through the online update process. By selecting this tile, we can then make sure that we're registered with the channel and we can install the patches. We can see here that we have the installed patches for ZenWorks Service Desk 23.4. So that's been complete. If you wish to see full view of the demonstration for upgrading to version 23.4, check out on the open text YouTube support channel. Next, straight away, logging into the portal, you'll see the color changes on the sidebar. This is so users can see anything above zero for alerts and outages will be notified to them in red. Now we're gonna check the request priority. Here we're gonna set up some privileges for request priority. If we go to the request tab, we could then see the request priority is derived. We're gonna change this to selected so that we can manually set our setting for request priority. We set a default, so if nothing is set, it'll be a default of medium at this point. Then if we go to our technician portal, we can then open up any one of these and we can see that the priority is changeable now. We can modify this priority as needed depending on the use for the use case for this customer. 
Now we can set up the customer priority view. So there under the customer tab, we can show priority urgency, either yes or no. We'll set this to yes. And so if we then go over to the customer portal, we'll see that they can actually see the priority view of the ticket. We've had customers request this be toggled, either enabled or disabled. We'll now go to the dynamic forms. We've made a few adjustments in here, one of which is the full width display and the URL. We're going to drop in a URL component. And once we do this, we're going to give it a label. We're going to go ahead and hit save, at which point we can go to the dynamic form while we're creating a request. So let's go over and save this and then go up to creating a request. And let's fill out a customer, and then we'll make it, a, for this dynamic form, a change request. Now we'll select that change request. We put the URL in, and you'll notice on the right-hand side, there's a pop-out for this URL. Once you put in the proper syntax, you could then select the icon, and it'll pop out to a new tab. This makes it handy for users to get to those locations without having to copy and paste. Now you can see on the full width of the customer request, we'll see the dynamic form is taking up the full width of the page. So now we've made it easier for you to see those dynamic forms. We've also done the same thing for custom field URL icons. So for instance, we're going to create an incident with a custom field that's a hyperlink. We'll go ahead and hit save here. We'll go ahead and create a request again. And we'll see that field also has that pop out icon. Go ahead and select. Put in some subject and description. And now when we go to that particular request, we'll see that custom field in here with the URL and the URL pop out on the right hand side. Next, we're going to go to the customer live link. The URLs are actually live for the customer as well. So if we log in as a customer and we then go to any of the calls that he has, for instance, the test custom field, we could see that there's a URL to parts manual live link. They just need to click the link and it'll appear for them. Just like the support page we created earlier, they just need to click the link and it'll open up that page. Next, we'll go to the description view. We're used to having the read more and the scroll, but sometimes these eight fields or eight lines are not enough. So we can actually pop that out now and see the full view from here. You have the request and the technician at the top, and you can do what you need to to see all the details of that description. The next is outages modernization. We've modernized the outages so if we go, I've created a couple of outages here. And we can see here there's a one-time outage. We can edit from here. So this is the whole new change and modernization, this view. We have the blackout list. So you can see what item it's referring to, what SLA it's referring to. And you have the start date, the end date, and so forth. All right. We have an added field called title here as well. So that way you can have a title and a reason. So this title field can be put in as well. It's not required. As we create a new one, we're going to create a conflict on this particular outage. So we will go ahead and continue to create 
You obviously have some notifications if you wanted to select that. You can do reminders before the outage to notify people. In this case, we're not going to. We'll put in a quick reason for required field for this particular outage. This The reason is required, whereas the title is not. And this is server monthly maintenance. We're going to select a particular device. In this particular device, we're going to tell it when it's offline and when it's online, so it'll toggle those variables or statuses. There is no particular blackout schedule for this particular item. We're going to actually select one that will conflict. So let's go and select one that will conflict. The service desk one, which does have an SLA, we're going to say offline. We're going to say available. We could see the blackout window. We'll hit create, and you notice that there's an error, meaning there's a conflict message. The schedule for this item clashes with another outage. So we'll cancel that, but we're going to wait a minute, and we'll be able to actually see. Notice that we have planned outages, we have current outages, and we have concluded outages. All right. The time's going to tick over to where we're going to see a new current outage come through. So there's our planned outages. Let's wait a couple seconds more and we'll see this change on us. So we currently have two planned outages. And now, if we look now, there's one planned outage and there's one current outage. 90 moved over because it is currently in effect. If we then log in, we could see the outages change from two to three, and we could see this public outage is available for view of the particular outage itself. Okay, we're going to log in. And that's the modernization of the outages. Now let's go to Amy import. We've made some changes for the Zenworks import for Amy so that you can specify the default status that it comes in. Typically, the default state would be arrived and you'd have to go back in and change it to deployed. And if you had 30 of those, you'd have to do that 30 times. Now we have a state that we can set from the get-go so that depending on whether it's hardware software, bundle, or mobile device, you could set that default state for those devices or those components. So when things are imported, they'll come in for that default state, which should save an enormous amount of time if you do a lot of Amy imports, especially the first time. Okay? Because we figure if we're importing from ZCM, the devices are pretty much already deployed. Okay, if we go over and we could see that we have auto create no here. So we'll go over to our technician portal while we'll check to see if we've gotten any updates. The update is complete, no failures. So we'll now go over to the user technician portal and we'll go to the item itself. And we do have one more here. And before we create this, let's go ahead and see what the full name is. So OVHEM, we're going to do a create and yes. And that was from ZCM. So now if we go to configuration and open up OVHEM, we could see the import status is deployed. So that should save some considerable amount of time if you're doing Amy imports. Now the default state for item change after close was you couldn't do it. However, we've had some requests for this. So you could see here that uh, we have a device here that, well, we'll switch off to a different one. Hang on a second. Let's pick a different one. Let's go ahead and close this particular ticket. Now that it's closed, we can then 
still change this to some other item. That way your reporting is accurate if you're reporting against an item or what technicians worked on. We can see that the next step would be unknown item note close. If you have an open request, which we're going to open right now, and we'll have an unknown item in this particular request. So we're going to make sure it's unknown item. We're going to set it to moderate and create a request. Once this is created, the ticket's there and the item number is the unknown item indicator, right? Now, we're going to make sure it's open so the technician has worked on it. Now, the technician may want to close this. So, for instance, if he goes to add note and he puts in his closing information, right? And he wants to change the status to closed or some exit state, it will now error here, whereas before it would you would lose the data that was in this note. Now what you can do is save it as a draft so that you can then later on change that item to the proper item from unknown to the proper item. And then you could open that draft and then you could close it through this process. This way you're not losing any information. Now in this case it failed and the reason why is because I didn't save after I changed that item. So I need to make sure that I hit save before that item so that it's in the system. Now opening the draft, I could then change the status to close resolved and that's complete. Next, we've done some cosmetic changes in labeling to make it more consistent and intuitive. So under setup, under privileges, we had force search here. Well, it didn't really tell us a lot, so we changed it to proposed solution for new request. The next one is, this was getting mixed up as LDAP groups for users, but actually it's for store items. So we've modified that label as well to make it clearer for the administrator. And then finally, people didn't know that they could actually drag and drop images into the description. So they were saving them as attachments instead. And this way they can just, they know they can drag and drop. If they have attachments, they would then need to add those attachments. Those are the features in the latest. Now, thank you for joining us, and I hope you found this video helpful to discover the advantages of upgrading to the latest Service Desk version. We know service management is a key component to your customer satisfaction, and we're listening because productivity is in the details. Thank you again for joining us, and have a great day.